Hello, this is the second part of week 5 lecture. In this part, we will discuss a very important subject. Uh, this subject is about translating research into practice. By the end of the discussion of this part of lecture, you will be able to describe the individual nurse's obligation to use research in practice. Analyze the difference between research utilization and evidence-based practice. Evaluate resources for the best available evidence. Identify resources for critically appraise, appraising evidence. Assess organizational barriers to facilitators and facilitators of the implementation of research findings. And identifying strategies for implementing evidence-based practice within the context of an organization. This slide illustrates factors influencing the use of research. These factors are rising cost of health care. By 2008, 15% of the population will be over 65. About 45 million Americans do not have health insurance. Health care costs as a percentage of the GDP were about 15.3%. Quality improvement initiatives. There are several quality improvement initiatives, such as the National Quality Forum. Uh, there are 30 measures that healthcare organizations can take to improve quality. And the other agencies, uh, the Agency on Healthcare Research and Quality. Uh, pressures to avoid errors. You can review the Institute, the Institute of Medicine reports to Error is Human that was written in 1999 and the uh, work environment for nurses and patient safety that was written in 2004 and the Institute of Safe Medicine Medication Practice as well are examples of uh, 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 to avoid errors. Research about the costs of, non, uh, of not implementing evidence for example, nosocomial infections like catheter-related infections, ventilator-associated pneumonia, pressure ulcers. In this slide, there's an emphasis. The uh, it's emphasized the twofold importance of research. Number one, doing the right thing to achieve positive patient outcomes. For example, protocols to reduce ventilator-associated pneumonia in critical care units. Number two, preventing harm by discontinuing outdated or outmoded practices. For example, we no longer use heparin to maintain a potency of uh, peripheral IV catheters. The key elements of the National Institute of Health Roadmap for re-engineering the clinical research enterprise and harness scientific discovery for health promotion. Elements of the roadmap include new pathways to discovery, such as new strategies for diagnosis, treating, and preventing disease, research teams of the future, which focuses on high-risk research, interdisciplinary teams, and public-private uh, partnerships, Reengineering the clinical research enterprise, such as uh, such as creating clinical research network, policy analysis and coordination, dynamic assessment of patient report chronic reported chronic disease outcomes, and translating research. The goal of the NIH roadmap is to get research into the hands of practitioners to improve patient care. To this end, NIH, the National Center of Health, has announced clinical and translational science institutional awards to facilitate interdisciplinary collaboration and encourage scientists to work together to address complex pro uh, problems. Research is the foundation for practice uh, improvement. Exemplars of research where nurses have made considerable progress in the improvement of nursing practice are pre-op teaching, like early 
work of Gene Johnson, meta-analysis done by Cook and Divine, the pain management, the work of Sandra Ward and, uh, Ward and colleagues at the University of Wisconsin in, fa in facilitating the adoption of the pain management standards by the Joint Commission, assessment of children's behavior, the work done by Catherine Bernard with NCAS, a child assessment program that was widespread used by over 20,000 nurses at any single given time. Falls prevention, there are numerous programs by teams of experts across the country. Incontinence care, uh, as the American Journal of Nursing, the AGN monograph on incontinence prevention, the state of the science on urinary incontinence, a work done in 2003 and published in 2003. A family-centered care and intensive care. A, that's a work done by Mil, uh, Melnicki et al. in 2004. Those are examples of uh, uh, research uh, uh, done to improve practice. The NIH roadmap is designed to facilitate the translation of research into practice. Some decisions should not be based upon the results of quantitative data alone, but need to be integrated with data from qualitative research in order to apply it to the particular practice situations. The quality of care and the quality of the outcomes of care can be dramatically improved with the implementation of evidence-based practice. Requirements for the development of an evidence-based practice include a clearly written clinical question, more thorough research of the literature, review of single studies, meta-analysis, critically appraised topics, systema systematic reviews, and or clinical guidelines. Appraising the evidence and placing evidence in the context of patient, family, and community value. Appraisal tools exist for evaluating different types of evidence from a single quant a qualitative study, quant a qualitative meta-synthesis, descriptive studies, and randomized clinical trials to systemic reviews. Appraisal tools generally include steps for evaluating the quality of the research that is specific to the study design, type of review, or guideline. Assessment of the reliability and validity of the evidence and strategies for determining the applicability of the evidence to one's practice. Research utilization is an approach that involves reading the research and then examining it for its applicability to practice. Nurses have been leaders in research utilization with a number of early projects. In the definition of evidence-based practice, a key point is the distinction from research utilization, which focuses on using the particular research finding in practice. Whereas in evidence-based practice, the focus is solving a clinical problem with a research-based solution. A second key point to emphasize is that evidence-based practice includes consideration of uh, the patient's preference. Preferences. It should be noted that when patient preferences are discussed, it is often in the context of making choices about specific treatments. Many times in certain settings, nurses would assume that patients want to receive the best care possible. For example, with a ventilator-associated pneumonia, it would be assumed that the patient's preference is to receive the standard of care that would best prevent this serious complication. Government and private agencies are placing increasing emphasis on translation science. Examples of agencies are the Agency of Healthcare Research and Quality, AHRQ, the NIH Roadmap, Map, uh, Leaf Rock Group, group consisting of organizations that buy health care to foster the implementation of initiatives that are 
designed to improve healthcare safety and quality. Institute for Healthcare Improvements, IHI, an organization designed to improve health by advancing quality and value of healthcare. The steps of evidence-based practice are outlined in the next several slides. And they include asking the relevant, the relevant clinical question, searching for the best evidence, quickly appraising the evidence, integrating evidence with clinical ex expertise, patient preference and values in making the practice decision or change, and finally evaluating the practice decision or change. The first step in evidence-based practice, which is asking the right question using the PICO or PICO format. What that, and that's, that includes patient population, intervention or interest area, comparison, and outcome. The stages of Rogers' diffusion of innovation theory describes how innovations spread through society. Diffusion theory is a theory about communication. It provides a useful model in planning for the integration of evidence into practice over time. According to Rogers, the diffusion of innovations occurs in stages. Those stages are knowledge, persuasion, decision, implementation, and confirmation. The first stage in Rogers' theory of diffusion of innovations is the knowledge stage. Do you subscribe to a nursing research journal? Uh, do you subscribe to a clinical practice journal that has a research column? Can you provide an example of a research finding that uh, you have read about recently? that has important implication for practice. Uh, so think about or reflect on how do you inquire a, a new uh, information or knowledge. The persuasion stage asks how do you use information communication networks in your work or clinical settings. Can you identify someone who has served as a champion in the implementation of a key change? What are the characteristics of a champion? In the decision stage, key questions to ask include what are factors that would facilitate the adoption of an innovation? What are factors that would make it difficult to adopt an innovation? Can you think of an example of when an innovation was tried but rejected or accepted? Research can be implemented in a variety of manners. Some questions that are raised when research is implemented include Will the outcomes remain the same if the intervention is modified to suit the particular environment? For example, if a strategy has been demonstrated to be effective in reducing cognitive decline in the elderly during hospitalization, will the same results be achieved if modifications occur? When might the modification be, uh, be so expensive, extensive that one cannot be sure that the outcomes will be the same. Will data be collected regarding the outcomes? What outcomes? What outcome data should be collected? What happens when there are different recommendations from different guidelines? In the confirmation stage, uh, what factors might influence whether an agency continue with the implementation of an innovation? What would innovation uh, what would motivate the staff to continue with the innovation? What kind of reinforcement for an innovation would work best for, uh, on your clinical unit? How should the innovation be evaluated? 
Is it by patient perspectives, nurses' perspectives, or outcomes? What is the value placed on each of these perspectives? Innovators are uh, active. Uh, are active in seeking new information. Organization, they are the organization's visionaries. Early adopters are organization's opinion leaders who learn about an innovation and apply it to their practice. They can be effective in communicating the value of, the, of an innovation. Early majority uh, won't bring forth an innovation but will readily adopt it when brought forth by others. Late majority are skeptics who do not adopt something unless there is a pressure, maybe part of a backlash. Laggards are most secure in holding on the past, most comfortable when an idea cannot fail. The steps of Stittler's research utilization model which has been updated to facilitate evidence-based practice in five phases. Those phases are preparation, validation, evaluation or decision-making, and translation or application, and the evaluation uh, phase. Stepler model provides direction for individuals and members of groups. Thus, it can be readily applied by nurse managers to the clinical setting. This model can be compared and contrasted to the steps of both the scientific method and the nursing process. The steps for the preparation phase, phase one, includes identifying and defining the problem. For example, using the case management focus by identifying the most common types of clinical problems in the unit or clinical problems that have been very challenging for the staff. Preparation also involves searching for evidence by identifying resources within the clinical agency and the community to assist in searching for evidence. Resources like librarian at the clinical agency, librarian at the university, research priorities as identified by professional groups such as specialty association, and review resources of evidence such as the federal guidelines clearing. Also define the external factors influencing innovation and adoption. Factors may include accrediting organizations, professional associations, special specialty organizations, or third-party peers. Uh, defining internal factors of, or, uh, of influence on adoption like uh, patient population, nursing staff, leadership, members of interdisciplinary health team, board members of the agency, and financial uh, resources. Phase two of Settler model is the validation phase. Um, the validation fails phase uses a rating system for the quality of the evidence and it plays information about research problem in a table to facilitate analyzing and comparing results and the uh, this, uh, this discernment of patterns in studies. Phase three, the evaluation or decision-making phase, is used to evaluate research by using resources, such as faculty and graduate nursing students, this would be particularly important for institutions with limited resources. One might also utilize the research department of a large medical center. Evaluating other factors uh, such as risk, would there be any harm to patients with implementing the practice? Feasibility, are there any training or equipment costs associated with implementation? And readiness of the finding, is this a finding that is ready for implementation? 
When translating research studies into practice, consider uh, individuals, groups, uh, departments, uh, the organization. Uh, consider the use of multiple strategies. And use caution in evaluating the strength of uh, evidence. Evaluation may be done in a formal or informal manner. Stettler emphasized that evaluation is a dynamic process. The evaluation should include an examination of the outcomes as well as a change process. Evaluation can be done informally and uh, the information gathered uh, can be used to address problems with implementing and implementation and effectiveness. Evaluation can be done formally and linked to patient outcomes. For example, a questionnaire about the change process can be distributed to staff members. An agreed upon method of evaluation can be used to determine whether the practice change made an impact on patient outcomes. Increasingly, institutions are examining costs associated with implementing a change. Strategies can be used to determine the costs to the institution or any cost saving it should be noted that there are a variety of methods for evaluating costs and care should be taken to use a method that is appropriate for the particular situation and uh, one that captures all of the costs. Evaluation can be done at the individual level or at the institutional level. For example, are individual nurses adhering to a protocol to prevent ventilator associated pneumonia at the institutional level the question would be has the rate on ventilator associated pneumonia decreased since the implementation of the evidence-based protocol a number of leaders and evidence-based practice have developed hierarchies of evidence to assess a, part a pr practitioner with determining the strength of the evidence at the lowest rank of pre-processed Evidence is a single study. However, a well-designed single study with appropriate sampling may provide evidence for implementation. Individual strategies for promoting evidence-based practice in nursing may include uh, identifying challenges in providing care, asking questions about agency practice practices ask for the evidence underlying practices, identifying clinical practice problems, join professional association for ready access to research and standards, um, subscribe to journals with research synopsis, for implementing evidence-based practice at the organizational level in regard to signing up for alerts, uh, alerts, here are some possibilities. Uh, for example, the American Nurse Association has the Insider, uh, in, which includes pertinent news on breaking events of, important, of importance to nurses. The Institute of Safe and Medication Practice provides a newsletter for nurses on medication safety issues. The Agency on Healthcare Quality and Research, AHQR, um, have agency on healthcare quality and research. Uh, research focuses on helping people making more informed decisions and improving the quality of healthcare services. This slide illustrates the steps in collaboration in. Uh, in order to implement evidence-based practice, which include identifying key stakeholders using the PICO or PICO question uh, it devel developed earlier would help uh, to identify the stakeholders. It involves uh, involve as many people as possible in the process. Think about how can uh, how can many people be involved, and what are different rules. Uh, roles that can be assumed by staff members, students, faculty, organizational leaders, and informal leaders. Partner with researchers, 
identify researchers and their expertise, describe existing partnership and uh, future possibilities, partner with faculty and nursing students to gather evidence, publicize nursing research, publicize your successes, uh, what are the organizational strategies that can be used to publicize successes? For example, have nurses made significant contributions to patient care? What kind of preparation would nurses need to in order to feel comfortable about publicizing their successes related to practice improvement? Are nurses identified by name and accomplishments in the media in your local community? 